Memories and Imagination, a memoir piece written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's Website. The writer John Banville observed, Memory is imagination, and imagination is memory. I don't think we remember the past, we imagine it. I have vivid memories of my early childhood. I believe they're memories, not imagination. Which is why the five-year-old selfie hashtag challenge on social media caught my eye. Launched on Facebook and Twitter by Young Minds, a UK-based charity and lobby group for young people's mental health, the rules of the challenge were simple. One, find a photo of your younger self. Two, write three things that you'd tell that child. Three, use the hashtag five-year-old selfie in your post or tweet. Four, tag three friends to help spread the love. I'm not one to tag friends and pass on things on social media, but the writer in me and the middle-aged man full of young boy memories, or imagination, took up the challenge. When I was five, and my younger brother was only two, our parents separated, and, in an unusual situation for those days, my father gained custody of us. To help him look after two young boys, the three of us moved in with his parents, my nan and pop. Fifty plus years on, I still recall the day Dad drove into my grandparents' driveway without Mum. My brother and I were staying with Nan and Pop while our parents packed up our old home and their lives together. We boys thought it was a holiday. Dad parked the car and sat us down for a father and son's talk. As a two-year-old toddler, my brother had no idea what Dad was telling us, but I did. I recall my tears when Dad said we weren't going home and Mum wasn't joining us at Nan and Pop's house. And I remember my brother laughing at the sight of his big brother crying. I have another memory from around this time, but when our parents were still together, we went for a holiday for a few days, perhaps to Nan and Pops, to prepare for Mum and Dad's separation. And the old lady, who lived next door, looked after my pet guinea pig for me. But when we got home, the guinea pig was dead. I recall the old lady looking over the fence and saying sorry, and how I burst into tears and blamed her for killing my guinea pig while my young brother laughed at his big brother crying. These two unrelated events have stayed with me as linked memories. Sad news, me crying, and my brother laughing. And the sense of loss, and a longing for things to be normal again. I was 40 when my son, my only child, was born. And when he was five, the same age as me in those childhood memories, and I was in my mid-40s, I broached them with my mother. No, you're wrong, she told me. We never had a guinea pig. You've imagined it. It was a long time ago. Memories are subjective, and so is imagination. Did I, as Banville suggests, imagine the death of a pet guinea pig and pair it with my parents' separation? Did I imagine crying and my brother laughing? Did I imagine feeling sad? Some memories are not imagination. My parents separated and my brother and I lived at my nan and pop's place with our father for six years before he met another woman, who became his second wife and our stepmother. With the benefit of hindsight, I see mine wasn't an unusual situation. There were many broken homes back then. Some kids lived with their mothers, some with fathers or grandparents, and others with foster families. But it was a situation no one talked about in those days. And this is why the first thing I told my younger self in the hashtag five-year-old selfie tweet was, don't cry, you're not the only one in the world whose parents have separated. Then I cut the young boy some slack. Tomatoes and peas aren't that yucky, but you're right about Brussels sprouts. And I finished with a hot tip, save up your pocket money and buy Apple shares. My middle-aged memory informs me I've never bought Apple shares. So the best I can hope for financially is to follow John Bamville's lead and imagine it. As for the hashtag five-year-old selfie's memory of my guinea pig, I don't think it was my imagination. Hi, I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's Website. I wrote Memories and Imagination in August 2019, inspired by the hashtag five-year-old selfie challenge on social media. And the memory is imagination, and imagination is memory quote, by Irish author John Banville, whose 2005 Booker Prize winning novel, 
the C I'd just read. As I admitted in the piece, I invoked a writer's license for the challenge. For a start, I didn't tag three friends to help spread the love on social media. And in the photo posted, I was closer to four than five. But unlike my son and his generation, born and raised in the digital age, I don't have hundreds, or perhaps thousands, of photos of the younger me. The three things I told the child on the photo, however, were from the heart. Don't cry, you're not the only one in the world whose parents have separated. Tomatoes and peas aren't that yucky, but you're right about Brussels sprouts. And save up your pocket money, and buy Apple shares. And sorry mum, I didn't imagine the guinea pig. I remember having one when I was five. I hope you enjoyed my memories and imagination. You can read this memoir piece and all my short stories, blog posts and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story collections, including my latest collection, 12 More Furious Months, from the Amazon Kindle and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be in your podcast feed shortly. In the meantime, check your feed or the podcast website tallandtrueshortreads.com for earlier episodes from seasons 1, 2 and 3. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite app. Doing so helps other listeners find my stories. You can support this podcast financially by making a small one-off or regular donation via the ACAR supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. And finally, please tell your family and friends about Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's website.